This lesson is on gas collection over water. So it's a specific uh, gas law problem um, using partial pressures. And it's kind of like a lab-based question so that I've seen before on, um, on AP exams. So um, let's start um, reading this problem. Or actually, let me just explain this setup here. So you have some type of chemical reaction here. So there's a reaction happening here. And uh, the reaction ends up releasing a gas, and you're interested in how much gas gets released. So the reaction happens inside this flask. There's a rubber stopper here, okay? And then the gases released from the reaction go through this tubing, um, and then it goes into a water trough here. And uh, first, before you start all of this, you're supposed to fill up a test tube. You actually fill it completely with water. So you dip it into water, or uh, you know you turn it sideways and you completely fill it with water okay and then what you do is you invert it upside down over the area where the gases from the reaction are coming from okay and what happens is as the gases fill this water will become displaced and you'll actually get some of this water will actually travel out this way like that okay and so as the gas starts moving up this column um, starts filling more and more with uh, with air um, and this is what's what I just circled there. This represents the gas from the reaction. From the reaction. And in this particular reaction, it's uh, between solid zinc and excess hydrochloric acid. Excess meaning we don't have to worry about this being any type of limiting reactant problem. So we have plenty of HCl and it's going to run, and uh, the one that's going to run out is zinc. So the amount of gas produced is controlled by this quantity of zinc we have. Calculate the volume of H2 released, of gas released. So first of all, there's the chemical reaction here. So that should give you a hint that we need to write a balanced equation. So we have zinc, and we're reacting with H+. Plus, which, so I'm writing a net ionic here. So we're reacting with H+. Plus. Okay, and this yields uh, zinc, always makes a 2 plus ion, and H2 gas is the other product. So this is what's filling up this uh, this uh, inverted uh, test tube here. So we need to balance this. So we need to write a 2 there. And then I think it's balanced. So notice the charge is also balanced. So t so 2, by putting that 2, now we have a 2 plus on the reactant side. And that 2 plus gives us a 2 plus on the product side. And the quantity of hydrogen is conserved also. So it says calculate the volume of H2 Okay, released, and it gives us the total pressure inside the test tube is 784 torr. So the uh, total pressure then, so there's two things actually, and it says um, it, this reaction takes place at 30 degrees Celsius. So there's actually two different gases inside here. Okay, one is of course the product, so P total. Okay, inside here. Actually, we'll we'll return to this in a second. But let's let's write a formula. Let's write an equation that actually shows a solution for what our final thing. This is a common uh, problem-solving technique in AP Chemistry. Is we we try to write a relationship for what exactly we're trying to solve for. So we're trying to solve for volume of H2. Okay, so and make sure you use subscripts. Okay, anytime you have partial pressures, make sure you use the proper, uh, you keep your substances organized by using subscripts. Okay, when you write out what volume and moles are. So we want the volume of H2. Okay, this is going to be equal to the moles of H2. So these have to make sure that they match. Okay, times R times T over the pressure of H2. So right now, the only two things we know in this equation are... Uh, the temperature, so we know temperature and R, that's all we know. It gives us a pressure, but this is the total pressure. It's not the pressure of H2. So we can't just go plug, go plugging this number in for here. 
okay, because it's not the pressure of H2. And we also don't know moles of H2 either. We don't know this, and we don't know this. If we get those two, we're good. We could solve this problem. So our, uh, uh, so, um, our moles of H2, we'll address that in a second. But first, I want to try to figure out what this is going to be, the pressure of H2. So the total pressure, we have two things in here. We have H2 gas. So I'll, I'll use this a black dot to represent H2. So H2 is filling this up. And we also have, I'll use blue, we also have water vapor. Okay, so some water at 30 de degrees. I know water boils at 100, but some of it is actually vapor even at even at like 10 degrees Celsius, there is some amount of water vapor present in the air. So this right here is um, going to be H2O vapor. So the total pressure inside this little portion right here, the total pressure is equal to the pressure of H2 plus the pressure of H2O. Okay, And we know this. This is what they gave us. They gave us 784 torr. Okay, and... Uh, so if we know what this is, we could figure out what this is, okay? And then we can plug in here. So um, I Googled around and I found a chart of vapor pressure. So vapor pressure of water is a function of temperature. So I want to know what the pressure of water is at 30 degrees Celsius. So I found a chart on Google, and it's on my next slide here, okay? And uh, from this table, I see that here's temperature. And at 30 degrees Celsius, okay, the uh, pressure of water is 31.8 torr. I'm just going to use three sig figs. So this number right here is 31.8 torr. So if I solve for the partial pressure of H2, then it would be 784 minus 31.8, which is equal to 752 torr. Okay, and I'm going to convert this to, or when I solve here, uh, my moles of H2 times RT, so R is 0 0.08206 liters atmosphere moles Kelvin times the temperature, which is 30 C, so that would be 303 Kelvin, okay, divided by um, and I need to convert this to ATM, so it's 752 torr times 1 ATM over 760 torr. Okay, and now I need to address, I need to figure out my moles of H2. So hopefully you noticed that they gave you grams of zinc, and we have our balanced reaction here. That So we're going to take our zinc, 0. 0.625 grams of zinc, and convert that to moles. We want to know how many moles of H2 that is. So, uh, let's see. Where do I have that? Okay, so let's uh, let's just do that little side work up here. So, 0. 0.625 grams of zinc. They react in a one-to-one -one ratio. So, one mole of H2 over one mole of zinc times and uh, oh actually can't believe I just forgot that so I forgot the molar mass step so the molar mass of zinc is 65.39 grams and then they react in a one-to-one -one ratio one mole of H2 over one mole of zinc. Okay, so grams cancel, moles of zinc cancel. Okay, and I, I wind up with 9.56 times 10 to the negative third moles of H2. Okay, so with so that number, so this number here, I'm going to plug in for this N2. So the take-home message here, or uh, let's, let's uh, write out the answer. So I got uh, it looks like I got 0 0.240 liters of H2. Okay, the take-home message here is a couple key points here, and I'll use a highlighter here, is this. Okay, the uh, pressure that they give you on these gas collection problems is usually the total pressure. Okay, and so we're going to have to use this and solve for pH2. 
So another, another way to say the same thing is you need to make sure that your volume, moles, and pressure match before you go and start plugging things in to this, this formula here. Um, and so to get pressure of H2, you have to use this piece right here. So we have to do side work for that. And then to get moles of H2, we had to do side work up here to get that. Okay, and once everything matches, then you can plug in and then solve. Okay, so I, I have a, an example for you guys to try. So there's our vapor pressure chart. So you may need to go back to you. Okay, so you may need to uh, you may need to look at this chart for the next problem. So you might have to like revert, you know, uh, reverse the rewind the video and pause it for a second to go back to this chart. So um, so here's the example problem. This is it right here. Okay, so uh, gas collection over water. Um, so, and I have some hints here. Okay, I'll let you read through that. And I, I think I kind of went over like the take home messages. So you need to make sure and be consistent. So notice how I'm, uh, I, I'm keeping volume, pressure, and moles. They all need to be constant here. And the, the best way to organize your work is to ensure that you're, you're, you're making sure you plug in the right numbers is to use subscripts. Okay, and that's really kind of like the key to doing this. Okay, so look forward to seeing what you guys come up with on, on this example. Good luck.